<laughs> What's up, my family and friends? You know, if I had but one question to ask God, I would ask Him out of all human suffering, uh, the loss of children, parents, best friends, jobs, finances, why addiction? Why did you have to throw that in the mix? Because I despise addiction, I really do, in any sense. I'm addicted to cigarettes. <laughs> mm. But I despise addiction for one reason and one reason only. Because it takes us outside of the character of which we were created in the image to be. <laughs> and that image is in the image of an almighty God. So any addiction that we have, it takes us out of that character. It takes us so far away from the spirituality of a godlike nature in our lives. And I say this all because yesterday on my way home from work around three o'clock, I pull up at Country Fair, there's an individual sitting out front. Hmm. I happen to notice because um I have, you know. PTSD, so, <laughs> an extreme case of PTSD. I plot out escape routes in the whole nine yards as soon as I can. I could walk into a building first time ever there, and immediately I'm looking for escape routes, you know, exits, blah. blah. It's just who I am. But nonetheless, I pull up at three o'clock somewhere shortly after three because I get off at three, and this individual sitting there. This morning, on my way to work, the wee hours of the damn morning, hmm, happened to notice this same individual sitting there. The hell? And I think to myself, you know, this person could either be doing one of two things. One, yesterday, they were waiting for a ride home. And this morning, they're waiting for a ride to work. But what are the chances that they would be waiting at the same time I'm traveling? Slim to none. This little thing in my heart said, ask. So me, <laughs> yo, you all right? This individual looks up, tears in their eyes, starts spilling out this story. My level of empathy goes off the charts because that's who I am. So I said, let me go into this store, get my coffee and a muffin. When I come back out, I'll figure out what we can do to get you some help. Hmm. I go inside the store. I talk to the store manager. This manager confirmed everything that this individual told me. Now I thought to myself, this individual is either a master manipulating liar or they're telling the truth. But it doesn't matter to me, for real. What matters is, am I in a situation or... Am I in a, a position in my life where I can help this individual? Yes, I am. Hmm. So I come back out and I tell this individual, if you can get in my truck, if you can trust me long enough to get into my truck, I can do one of two things for you. I can either send you home or I can get you help. Without a hesitation, this individual jumps up, jumps into my truck. I load the bike that they had in the back of my truck. I go to work. I said, I got to work. I'm not giving up my job. <laughs> it's my payload. It's my ability to be able to help you, along with the many others I've helped. God forgive me for sounding like that wasn't boosting either. It's a, an affirmation of gratitude for, to the God of my understanding. Hmm. So I reach out to a few people that I know are in recovery. A couple of them said, look, bro, if this individual is still in your truck at 3 p.m., you get them here and we will get them help. But the help that we can offer them is recovery help. 12-step programs. So on my lunch break, I go out to my truck 
I drive to a local, um, you know, fast food restaurant. I get us a meal. I drive down to a local park. I tell this individual a little bit of my story. I'm all too familiar with recovery. Prison, the whole nine yards. <laughs> Dancing with the devil and the you know, blue moon. And I tell them, I am willing to help you if you really want help. In one of two ways only. One, I'm not going to help you by giving you my hard-earned cash. I'd be foolish to do so. The Bible tells me a fool and his money is soon departed. Wish I'd have learned that earlier on in life. But I tell this individual, I know what you're at. I know where you're at. Been there. So I can do one of two things. I can buy you a ticket home. It doesn't matter if you want to travel first class on an airplane or you want to ride in a bus. I'll buy you a ticket home. Get home. Get your life right. Which was in Arizona. It's a long way away from home. And my second ability to help was to get her into a safe place, you know, a recovery house. At lunchtime, by then, you know, the people that I had reached out to me said, if this individual is still with you at 3 p.m. when you get off work, you get that person here, we'll get them some help. So I relay this to that individual. I can either send you home or I can send you to a rehab. Funding is no question. You don't have to ask that. We're going to get you help. My boss tells me that when he came out, somewhere around 12, 30, 1 o'clock, that individual was gone. And it kind of broke my heart, you know. So, I, you know, I, I, I say a silent prayer. I did what I could do. I, I was willing to do what I ever, whatever I could do to get this individual either home or some help. And today's experience only awakened a deeper gratitude and a more passionate humility in my heart for those people that reached out to me Whenever I was in my act of addiction, which, you know, I was a drunk, <laughs> straight gold. Now, mind you, I've done drugs, but my drug of choice was alcohol, straight gold-blooded bourbon. So I want to apologize to those individuals that might be watching this video that reached out to try to help me, and I didn't take that help. I want to apologize to you for investing, for you, investing your energy, your time, your patience, your love, and your kindness into someone that didn't want it. I apologize wholeheartedly because I now know how that felt. I really do. And it's kind of humbling, you know, because I personally was given the opportunity through the help of other people. To break the chains that bound me to a world of misery and hopelessness. Which is what addiction is. An endless cycle of insanity. So I apologize to all of those that ever reached out to me. And I either shrugged you off or just ignored you. I apologize. And I love you. And I hope because of me, you didn't give up trying to help other people. Because even though I couldn't help this one individual, I will do the same thing for the next person. <laughs> it's, it's, it's who I am. Oh, sometimes I hate this thing called recovery as well. Because it gives you a heart. You know, it gives you... You know, when I first got into the program, I used to hear about these rewards, you know. In my addiction, man, I didn't give a damn about no one. I'd dump you on. Violence was like second nature to me. I didn't, like, I didn't care about shit. I'd dump you on your head, take some shit from you, whatever. The rewards that I required in the program are rewards like empathy, 
care. Con true, and I mean true, genuine concern for another human being. Which is something I, I never thought I could actually have after my son was murdered. I wanted to murder the whole world. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's how angry I was. I not only was angry as hell, but I became even more dwelled into my alcoholism than I had ever been before. I want to thank all of you. Everyone that I reached out to today that said they would help, I thank you. I thank the individuals at my place of employment um, that gave me any suggestions, that joked with me about what I was doing, even though some of their jokes was a little uncolored. I appreciate it. Because each and every one of you let me know in some small way I've been graced by God with an opportunity to have the privilege to be able to reach out and help another human being. Eric, I love you with all my heart, bro. George, I love you. Steve, my boss, love you. Jeff, I appreciate what you had to say. John, our newbie, <laughs> I appreciate what you had to say. I love all of you, man. You made me realize that I have come so far in my growth as a spiritual human, not as a religious human being that believes in God but as a spiritual Christian that believes in God Almighty, I've come a long way, and I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm going to get off here now because I got a little emotional, and I don't want to, I don't want to see you, I don't want you guys to witness me crying like a little girl. Peace. <laughs>